Let's continue to worship the Lord. Please be seated. We are here together in this place. And while it is true, some of us come out of here because of habit. And I say that because I had a grandfather who would say, we do this every Sunday. Do I have to do it again? So if you hear me say that, it is because I used to hear that on Sunday mornings. And I know that it is true for some people, but there are those of us who come hungry because we have had difficult weeks or we come to celebrate or because there is so much going on in this world that has us in a place of feeling disappointed or struggling and as though we are divided. And so it is the time where we come together to pray, to stand in the gap for each other because we are hurting or because we have heard things about our family that we didn't want to hear or because we see things on the news about 
people who do things to their children that is just inconceivable to us. And now is the time that we go to the Lord in prayer. It is a privilege to be able to pray to God. It is an honor to sit together with each other and pray. And so first we will start with a moment of silent confession because we are imperfect people. And then I will pray. And then together we will lift our voices and say the Lord's Prayer together. My friends, let's pray. God of grace and mercy, we come to you in this moment grateful for the smallest voices, grateful for the children who give us hope for the future, God, and yet confused by all that we see and all that we hear and overwhelmed by the news and feeling like what do we do in the midst of all of this? How do we fix this? And God, then, when we feel like that, nudge us on the shoulder, knock us to our knees and remind us, God, that you and you alone are God, and we cannot fix this without your help. Whether it's what's happening in homes or what we see on the news or what is happening politically and no matter where we stand on the issues, God, bring us together because we are your children. God, we get so frustrated and confused and on this Martin Luther King weekend, God, remind us that we can march together, we can find solidarity we can find the answers in your word if we just take the time and unite our hands together. God, we struggle with our own sinful nature. We struggle to remember that when the warm weather comes, we celebrate that while we think it is spring, the cold weather comes back and there are people who do not have a home and are cold and trying to find some place to go. There are people who do not have the medication they need, do not have the guidance they need, are struggling to find an answer to the questions their children ask, and so they reach out in ways we can't comprehend. Let us be your light in the darkness and be a reminder that there is hope at the end of the tunnel. Lord, for those who are grieving, be peace. And for those of us who can be a shoulder, let us be a shoulder, even when words aren't necessary or when they don't come. For those who are struggling with health issues, we know that you and you alone are the great physician. So touch and heal in that miraculous, supernatural way that only you can and work through the hands and the hearts of the doctors and the nurses and the medical teams and remind them to be patient and understanding. Give strength to the caregivers. Lord, we thank you for your son, Jesus. It is a gift that we cannot repay and his sacrifice was one that was painful Yet it gave us the chance to have a second chance. It gave us hope, and it gives us everlasting life so that we know while life here is temporary, eternal life is forever with you. Lord, Jesus was the one who taught and set the example. He was the one who taught us to pray, and so now we join together in one voice, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. My friends, God is gracious and God is good and God is loving, even when we don't know how to love ourselves and even when we are <coughs> sinful and we are sinful, God and God alone takes care of us. Know the good news, in Jesus Christ you are forgiven. How's everybody today? Good. You know what we're going to talk about today? Being together. What does together mean? Um, together. Some things are good together and some are not. Do you think it would be good together to be together with you in the cold in shorts? No. No. What if you and your coat were together outside? Would that be better? Yeah. That would be a lot better. Um, how about you and your big, heavy coat and shoes together in the cold? That's good. Would it be good if it was your big, heavy coat and shoes on the beach in summer? No. no. So sometimes things are good together, and sometimes they are not. <coughs> We're going to play a game. Anybody want to play a game? Yeah. All right. Whoever wants to play, we need to stand up right here, and we're going to play a game called Here We Go Round the Mulberry Bush. Anybody ever heard of that before? All right, so we're going to grab hands and make a circle. If you want to play, come on in. Anybody wants to play, come on in. Okay, so don't step on anybody, though. Okay? And here's what we do. You want to play, sweetie? You want to play? No? Okay, you don't have to. Now, we just go around in a circle. We're going to try this and hope being together is a good thing. You want to come on, buddy? You want to come play? No? Okay, well, you don't have to. That's okay. All right, we're all going to go that way. So start going around a circle. Ready? Go. Here we go. Everybody go that way. Round the mulberry bush, the mulberry bush, the mulberry bush. Here we go round the mulberry bush early in the morning. Okay, pretty cool, huh? All right, now we're going to play with this piece of furniture. Ready? Here we go. Let's go. Here we go round the mulberry bush. Keep going. Don't stop. Keep going. Mulberry bush. Keep going. Mulberry. Is it working? Keep going, keep coming this way. Can we keep making a circle? No. Was it good to be together with this, playing that game? No, but when we played it by ourselves, we got to go around a circle, right? Very cool. But you know what's good? Watch this. But I can sit in this, and it works good. It just isn't good for the mulberry bush. Okay, let's have a seat. So the thing is, it's good to be together. Oh, thank you, buddy. It's good to be together with some things. Our coat in the cold is good. Each other playing, here we go around the mulberry bush, that's good. Our bed when we're tired, that's good. But some things it's not good to be together with. You know what the best thing that we get to be together with for all time is? God. Being together with God is always good. It always works. And do you know how we're together with God? We put our hands together and we pray. We read our Bible. We talk to other people, like the awesome people around you, about God or adults or Sunday school or church. But anytime you're together with God, something good is going to happen. 
If you ever get scared in your room, maybe, or scared of the dark, you can always pray, and God will be there, and it will be helpful. So I want you to remember, if you ever need to be together with somebody, God is always the right person, because God, when you are together with him, is always going to be good, okay? Can we put our hands together and close our eyes and say, dear God, thank you for always being together with me. Help me to always be together with you. In Jesus' name, amen. Good job, good job. Thank you all so much. Wonderful message and music. And now we move forward with that same message given to us in the Word of God. It comes to us both from the Old Testament and the writer of the Psalms and in the writer of 1 Corinthians. As we move to God's Word, let us pray together. Help us to trust and understand how good it is to be together with you, gracious God. For you are all things good. And you remind us that life is a gift when we are with you and together with each other in and through you. May your word remind us and encourage us to that way of life in Christ. Amen. From the psalmist in Psalm 139, God gives us this word of intimate closeness. You have searched me, Lord, and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you, Lord, know it completely. You hem me in behind and before. You lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me and too lofty 
for me to attain? Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, and if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. The writer of 1 Corinthians talks about this intimate closeness with God. But whoever is united with the Lord is one with him in spirit. Flee from sexual immorality. All other sins a person commits are outside the body. But whoever sins sexually sins against their own body. Do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit, who is in you and who you have received from God? You are not your own. You were bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your bodies. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Together can be such a good and awesome and wonderful thing. Some things are just meant to be together. Lone Ranger and Tonto. The Beatles. Peanut butter and jelly. Bogey and Bacall. And the beach in summer. The beach in summer. Lest I say again, the beach in summer. Amen? Amen. Today, amen. <laughs> there was a poet named John Donne. He was also a minister. He wrote... Maybe one of the most well-known sayings, certainly a pretty well-known saying, and it says this, no man is an island entire of itself. Every man is a piece of the continent, a part of the main. Is being together important to us? Isn't it almost more important than anything else in some ways? especially when it's a good thing. How difficult can it be when it's not a good thing to be together with someone? You go into a meeting or you're going to see somebody, you're like, man, I got to hang out with them again? <laughs> or that person you can't wait to see. How cool is it when you get the butterflies or excitement, the time doesn't pass fast enough that you get to see them? There was a study done by the American... Psych Psychiatric Association. Studies show that social connection in a good and positive way is associated with a 50% reduced risk of early death. Early death. 50% less risk if you are in a good relationship. How cool is that? The study said 42.6 million adults over the age of 45 suffer from chronic loneliness. You ever been lonely? If you know the blues, you ever been lonesome? How hard is it? You just want to tell somebody. You just want somebody to be there with you and just... I don't need to say anything. Just be there because they want to be. Being together relationally. Friend, partner, compadre, your posse. You be tight, your BFF, my boo. Anybody got a boo? <laughs> you got a boo, Katie? <laughs> it's about being hitched, y'all. Intimately connected in a way that makes us feel and believe that we want to be connected, that we want to be together, that we want to say, you got me, and I got you, and that's good. I got you, babe. I got you, babe. Anybody name it? Sonny and Cher, right? Of course, they didn't stay together. That might not be the best example, but you know. <laughs> 
How cool is it when you're hitched? When you're hitched to something. I'm going to take a couple extra photos. Of what? Me and you. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. I wanted to tell you how much I love you and how amazing well, that's, how amazing our time together has been. Are you dead serious right now? You've taught me not only how to love, but how to be loved. Are you kidding me? Tiffany. Oh. Lynn Lacasio. Will you marry me? Yes, yes, I will. 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 Man, everybody in this room was smiling looking at those videos. <clears throat> Doesn't it just do something to you? Oh. When being hitched together is a good thing, I don't know that there's anything better. And when it ain't right, I don't know that there's anything worse. Amen? <laughs> Somebody's spouse is going, you better say amen. <laughs> Male or female. What does the psalmist here think about being hitched? You have searched me Lord, and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You know my thoughts. You know my going out and my lying down in all my ways. Before a tongue, before a word is on my tongue, Lord, you know it completely. You are there in front of me. You are there behind me. Your hand is on me. Such knowledge is too wonderful. For if I go to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in the darkest, deepest, scariest depths, you are there. And when I rise on the wings of the dawn, or even go to the far side of the sea, I know you are there to guide me. What is that like? If my world is falling apart, you, God, care enough to be there with me. When I am on top of the world, you are number one, blowing the horn at the party, pat me on the back, and put me on your shoulders. You are my friend. You are my God. You are the one who, when I am in deepest, darkest sin and have sold my body to the depths of the prostitution of this world, you come and get me. You pick me up and you clean me off. And you tell me there is hope, even for me. And you put a crown on my head, and you hold my hand, and you whisper that you love me, and things can be right again. It is not an easy thing in this world, brothers and sisters, to trust. 
And the reason is because we know with each other that we have trusted and that trust has been broken. You ever see a dog, you know, a dog who you walk up to the dog and they roll over and they show you their belly? What do they want you to do? Scratch it. <laughs> My dog, when you scratch your belly, goes, her back leg starts doing this. <laughs> And she looks at you, and when you stop, she looks at you like, hey, what are you doing? Keep scratching. <laughs> and as human beings, I think we want to do that. We want to believe the psalmist with each other and say, look, wherever I go, I want you to be there. And we get married, and we have friends, and we do all of those things, and we have parents and kids. We come to church. We want to roll over and show our belly and say, scratch me. And sometimes people kick us. Sometimes the same people that scratch us kick us. And then they scratch us again. And it's hard. And it's weird. And we don't know if we want to show you our belly anymore, because it's really, really cool when we're at Disney World and we get engaged and that moment of somebody going to their knee or being the person that goes to your knee or the person that they go to their knee for, you're like, this is going to be the best thing ever. And do we just get married and never, ever, ever have another moment's problem? Don't say yes. <laughs> friendships are like that marriages are like that any relationship we're ever going to have working relationships are like that sometimes we just want to show our belly and we just get kicked and sometimes people show us their belly and we just walk by and don't scratch them Heaven forbid, let's hope we never kick them. And sometimes we scratch and it's just confusing. And then we open the Bible and read what the psalmist says. God is always there. You, him, me, and above me and below me, beside me, in front of me, and behind me. And it is too wonderful. Now, I don't know about y'all, but that sounds pretty good to me. If I or any of us in this world want to hitch our wagon to something, that Sounds like the best thing going to me. And if we do that, and in that, then what the psalmist, who is a real human being, who understands what it's like to be in relationship, reminds us that if we do that with God, we got a whole heap of a better chance of doing it that way with each other of doing a whole lot more scratching than kicking or ignoring. Amen? Amen? And then the warning comes from Corinthians. That is right. Flee from sexual immorality. Because Lord knows there's every opportunity in front of us to get in it. And that, that's not just the things that we might think of on the internet or temptations before us to be unfaithful. It is the immorality that causes us to be unfaithful to God in all kinds of ways. With things that just aren't the best thing going. Might look like it. Might seem like it. But they're not. Whoever is united with the Lord is one with him in spirit. You are not your own. 
You were bought at a price. Y'all, when we didn't deserve to be bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your body. And here's the good news. In our lying down or our lying about somebody, in our joy of making connections or in our hurt of breaking connections or having them broken, God still buys us at a price. No matter what we prostitute ourselves to, God's unity and spirit with us is never broken. God knows us. God guides us. God holds us. And God loves us. And in all of that, God says to us, I am never, ever going to leave you. Let that settle in your heart. And consider that when the options come along to be unfaithful. And think about it. And know how good it is when you see the good connections in this life and you feel them and then weigh it. Do I really want to give that up? Or do I want to dive head first right back into that goodness? Don't be separated. By what can separate us from God, the scriptures say. God is always true and good. Trust that and be together in every good way with him. Because nobody ever functions well as an island. Not left to ourselves. Because in God, every one of us is a piece of the continent. A part of the main. Thanks be to God that our main, our BFF, our friend, our partner, our posse, our boo, our connection is God. And there ain't nothing better in all the world that we can be hitched to than that. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit.
flashes of lightning, rolls of thunder. Blessing and honor, strength and glory and power be to you, the only wise with wonder, awestruck wonder, at the mention of your name. Jesus, your name is power, breath and living water, such a marvelous mystery. didn't you? My friends, would you stand and say what it is that we believe our Apostles' Creed? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Catholic, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Rusty turned and asked me if I had a boo. I have a boo. The Lord is truly my boo because I believe that when you need someone, when you depend on someone, and when someone is always there for you, that is your boo. And God takes care of me at all times. He takes care of each and every one of us at all times. He supplies our every need and blesses us abundantly over and over again. God has blessed us, sometimes in spite of ourselves, and we have the opportunity to give back a portion of what it is he has given to us so freely. Now is the time for our tithes and our offerings. Mm -hmm.
Friends, would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, we are so incredibly grateful and humbled by all that you do for us, all that you give to us for the love you shower on us. Lord, we give back to you just a tiny portion of what it is that you've given to us. We give back with joyful, thankful hearts. Lord, we ask that you touch this offering, press it down, shake it together so that it flows over into this church, this community, and the world, and be ever so be ever so mindful, God, to make us good stewards of what you've given to us, Lord, so that we can remember that this is not about us, that this is not our money that we need to do with it what you would have us to do, God. Lord, we love you and we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. nothing that can fill us in body that is greater than that which fills us in our soul. In being loved, we can learn to love. In being forgiven, we can learn to forgive. In being in the trust of one who never fails we can learn to trust. God is our boo, our BFF, our Lord and Savior. 
He is the one, brothers and sisters, never kicks, always scratches, and calls us to do the same. Let us do just that. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you. And may we know that he is before and behind, above, below, and beside us in his peace and his love for all time. In the name of the Father and Son and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Make us one.